I have a lot of mixed feelings about this book. On the one hand, I really like the idea of Doctor Doom as Iron Man. I think it's a fun storyline. It's got lots of potential. There's some neat things going on here. But on the other hand, Bendis writes in such a way that everything that's contained in this book, if it were, say, a movie or a TV show, would last about five minutes. It's really just a lot of dialogue with him jumping around from place to place, and it's told in such a way that it takes you no time to read, and it's completely done in a few minutes. And the problem with that is this is a $3.99 book, which is why it's hard to recommend a book like this. The story is so much fun. If they were to take the first four issues, rewrite them and compress them down into one issue, it'd be fantastic. It, it might even be one of the best that Marvel puts out. All in all, not highly recommended. We're three issues into this series, and I'd still be hard-pressed to give you a defining characteristic that sets apart the Inhumans and the X-Men mutants. I mean, granted, one goes through a cloud, and the other goes through puberty, but still, having seen the two of them come together and fight in this series has been a lot of fun. It does a really good job of laying out the story, making it understandable what's going on since there are things happening at the same time all over the world, a cast of characters that is actually pretty easy to follow and you don't get confused with, although they do introduce some Inhumans here that you might not be familiar with if you're not reading everything within the Marvel Universe. However, the whole picture here is of a really great series that's bringing these two teams together and facing them off. Now, technically, this is the fourth issue because there was a zero, so you'd think the story might be a little further along, but hey, overall, it's a great story, fantastic artwork, and it's well worth checking out. Well, the first big event for DC's Rebirth is in the books, so to speak, and I got to admit, I think they actually pulled it off. I wasn't too excited about the idea of Justice League versus Suicide Squad, but they've done a great job of reestablishing the Suicide Squad, rebuilding the Justice League, forming the new team behind Batman, and showing that there's a new evil threat out there that we still have to worry about. So, I gotta say, it was great artwork, it was a lot of fun, it was big, it was explosive, it felt like it was a giant crossover event. So overall, I think DC really did knock it out of the park. And I got to admit, I was wrong. I'm sad to see that this particular throwback Silver Age arc has ended, but this story has shown something very important that's missing in a lot of today's comics. Subplots. There's a lot of stuff in action comics that's been hinted at or pointed to, but it doesn't come out right away. It doesn't build up and, and throw everything on the table right at once. It slowly builds storylines up until they explode, but it lets little stuff happen in the background. And those little things build up, and then they explode. And I think that's an important thing that's missing in a lot of modern comics. Action has done this very well. It's from Dan Jurgens, and he used to balance this stuff in the 90s fantastically. This particular story, though, it's had that fun Silver Age throwback, it's got some brilliant artwork, and it tells us that it's time to actually look at Lex Luthor in the New 52 Rebirth universe as someone different than the one we've always known. And I think that is one of the most awesome things about this book. One of the things so often underutilized on The Flash is his brain. He's a crime scene tech. He knows how to look for clues. And I know he can run fast, and that's like the gimmick thing that they do, but his intelligence is really a key part of his character, and that's why I love this story arc. He's going up against the rogues, which we've seen a million times, but the rogues are starting to get smarter too. So now the Flash has to outthink those who are outthinking him, which makes it much more than a story about a guy who can run really fast. Plus, the artwork in this book is incredible. I mean, I can't overstate just how awesome the artwork is and how great this story is too. This is actually one of my best reads this week. So if you haven't checked out The Flash lately, pick up these issues because this is one fantastic book that you're missing out on.